Welcome to the Pleasure Points Podcast. I'm your host, James Rohr. This episode, we are talking about your body and what your body might be communicating with you, how to navigate some of our symptoms and illnesses and intuitions and all the things. So um, this is like the one of the backbones of, of what I think is super important in life uh, and really a key to help navigating some of the hardships that we encounter and how to do it in a good, healthy, sustainable, transformative way. So super glad that you're here. Thank you guys, as always, for the support and spreading the love, sharing um, the show with your friends and family and loved ones and all of that. Thank you for leaving great reviews on your uh, podcast platform of choice. As always, you can hit me up on Instagram at James E. Roar, or you can email the show at pleasurepointspodcast at gmail. And I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks so much for being here. All right. Welcome back to Van Chovy. I love recording in here. This is so much fun. It's so cozy. I can't believe that like we built this thing. Every time I come in here, I'm like, whoa, my God, we did it. And everything is still hanging up. <laughs> the cabinets haven't fallen. The water works. Uh, you know, the lights are still working. It's like, holy crap. I can't believe that uh, that I did this thing. So, um, yeah, here we are still parked in the driveway, (laughs) but now with our little recording studio and it's awesome. Um, I'm sure at some point we'll do some recordings from the road. Maybe if we come to your area, you can come by and we'll give you a tour of anchovy. Uh, Jen will make sure that it smells nice with essential oils and, um, it'll probably be clean because I got in trouble (laughs) on our last trip. We were, uh, I was filming our behind the scenes of making dinner in the van. It was raining outside. So, we had just spent the day at uh, White Sands National Park in, where were we? Is that Arizona? Mex- New Mexico? I think it was southern New Mexico. And uh, we found this great boondocking site, and uh, it was raining. And so we were making the van inside, and I was just giving uh, people on my Instagram a tour. And Jen got really upset because, I uh, really upset might be exaggeration, but uh, she got upset with me because I didn't, like, clean up first. And so there was like, you know, there was stuff on the bed and, you know, the the grocery bags were out. It didn't look nice. And um, she was like, you know, my branding has an issue with your branding. (laughs) And, you know, well, I get it. She's got more followers than I do. Instagram is a visual medium. And I was just like, well, here's what the uh, the visuals look like normally. But if we uh, if we come to your area and you want a van tour, I'm sure that we will keep it nice and clean for you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so anyway, uh, this episode, I want to talk about something I've been teasing about for a while. Um, and now that we're in, uh, in the midst of our, uh, exploring the energy body course, uh, it seems like a good time to talk about this on the, on the podcast because it's really the motivation of part of the reason that I wanted to do the course. It's something that I spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, this topic is, is something that, um, if you've been an acupuncture uh, patient of mine or a coaching client of mine, you know, we've, we've ventured into this world in some way, shape or form. And it really has a lot to do with like our symptoms. I want to talk about, you know, what happens when we have symptoms, why do we have them? And, uh, and what sort of like some of the first steps that we can take to, uh, to navigating that terrain. And I, I believe that our, the majority of illness starts on the spiritual level. And that if we were perhaps meditating all the time or super dialed in and in tune with, um, with our intuition, then physical symptoms may not need to arise. The body may not have to adapt to the point where physical symptoms are the adaptation, where we might be able to make an adjustment or pivot or alter our diet or lifestyle or um, handle the relationship stuff that's coming up or deal with our work things the way that we need to, if only we had listened to what our intuition was telling us. But a lot of times we don't listen to it because it's easier not to sometimes, right? It's just like, we don't want to be inconvenienced. Oftentimes the changes that the spirit might be telling you to do are harder. They're more challenging. It may cause uh, some hard emotions for you, may cause upset for somebody else. You know, it's, uh, I remember, <laughs> it's funny. I remember when, uh, my mom, when I was in high school, I must've been, I don't know, 16, 17, maybe not, I don't know, 15 probably. Cause I, I didn't, wasn't driving yet. And my mom started doing all these like self-help weekends and, you know, shamanism retreats and stuff. And so it would be like me and my little brother, who's five years younger than I am. And 
I remember this this one time she came home. My mom came home from these retreats, this one retreat, and uh, she said, she goes, that's it. I'm done. I'm never making you guys dinner ever again. I'm tired of being the woman who just has to, like, cook and clean up after you guys. You're going to have to start doing that. Like, I, I've had enough. I'm more than this. You know, it's this whole, like, identity thing, and it was like, it was really funny. I remember looking at my little brother. Both of our eyes were really big, and we were like, oh, my God, she's, like, she's really fired up about this. And also, like, you know, it was Sunday night. She would have gotten back, and, like, we're pretty hungry. <laughs> and so it's like, um, okay, so what are we going to do now? Uh, she probably just threw, like, 20 bucks at us to order a pizza. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so she was, like, all adamant about it and all these things, and that lasted about 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then she went right back to to doing all the the mom things which we love her for um anyway so you know so the, the i don't know why did i start talking about that oh my god i totally lost my train of thought so anyway so the the spirit you know i i do believe that like whether it's our our own spirit our intuition whether it's angel spirit guides god the universe like whatever language you want to put to it i don't really care but the idea is that there are uh, most likely messages that have been coming to us that deep down, you know, if I said to you, what is the one change in your life you need to make in order to feel better? You know, something is going to come to mind. Something probably just pops into your head. Now, you may not like what that is. We may not want to listen to that because it's hard. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, like sometimes the things that we feel we have to do can have an impact on the people around us and it might make them uncomfortable. And so we may not want to do that depending on how you're wired and what your priorities are. You know, you might you might just find value in your own suffering more more so than inconveniencing somebody else. So there's lots of reasons why we don't necessarily listen to our intuition when it pops up. So, you know, you can go on and keep ignoring it and we ignore it and we ignore it. And then sometimes there might be, um, you know, maybe a show or a song or you hear a podcast, something comes on that gets your attention a little bit more. It's not just like a subtle transmission, you know, through the ether that is like a little whisper as you're falling asleep. It's a little more obvious. Maybe you're called, someone shared this podcast with you. Um, and this, you know, could be a tool that your the greater consciousness is using to get you to start paying attention to something, right? Maybe it is that thing of like, what is that one thing that you need to do in order to start feeling better? What is that thing that you've been putting off that you know you need to tend to, but maybe you just haven't wanted to, you haven't made it a priority. And so, you know, the, the, that message can start coming through, through different books, friends, conversations, whatever. And then if we ignore that, uh, if, you know, if something is really important, I do believe that then the sort of the, the last line that our soul, our spirit, our karma, whatever has in order to get us to make a change is physical symptoms. Because there's really nothing quite like being uncomfortable physically that will get us to start paying attention, at least in the beginning and at least for a little while. You know, whether, again, that could be headaches, back pain, shoulder pain, hand pain, uh, digestive distress, colds, flus, you know, COVID, like whatever. There could be, maybe I shouldn't have said COVID. I hope this podcast doesn't get shut down. <laughs> I said COVID. Uh, now I've said it like three times. Uh, yeah, so, you know, so all of these things can can come about. Our immune systems can be weakened because of, you know, our body has been adapting. We've been feeling a stress or feeling this pressure that we haven't made fully aware consciously. And uh, and our body's been run down. Its defenses are weak and we get sick. Or we, you know, move like a, like a jerk and, you know, we blow a disc in our back. Or, I mean, who knows? Could be anything. The point is, is that when those things arise... What is that message for you? What is coming up? What might there be to unpack in that physical experience, especially in that discomfort? Your body has been adapting. Your body has been, you know, is now forced to shift and to adjust. And it's creating inflammation. It's creating this whole kind of response. Uh, and, you know, what is that experience like? And so for me... I found, and if you listen to the IBD podcast a few episodes ago, you know, you heard a lot about what that story is like. But for me, it's just a much more empowering place to sit and ask and to ponder the question, what is my body communicating with me? 
what is my soul communicating with me? What is God communicating with me? What is this? Uh, what is the conversation that can be had with these symptoms and with this experience? Rather than feeling helpless or feeling like you're just at the mercy of, you know, these bugs that float in the air or like live on packages or live on dirty handles or like whatever. And, you know, it's just sort of like up to fate whether or not you, uh, you know, whether you get sick or not. Right. It's just sort of like these biological flukes and whether or not you get it or not. You know, this is just what happens and you live your life. And, oh, now I'm sick and like, oh, my back hurts or my neck hurts or I have these headaches and attention headaches. But like, whatever, I'll just pop some Excedrin and just get on with my life. There isn't really. Like, that's not a very empowering place to be. Like, what is the empowering thing? That you have access to Excedrin and that that works? You know, it's great not to be in discomfort, but also, like, what? where's the evolution there? Where's the growth? Where's the where's that opportunity for, you know, some sort of unfolding, some sort of uh, adjustment that that may make you stronger in the long run rather than just trying to triage and, and manage symptoms, you know, in the moment? Now, I'm not saying that managing symptoms is not valuable. Of course, it's valuable to be comfortable. I made my whole career in helping people to feel more comfortable. (laughs) I mean, shit, the name of this podcast is Pleasure Points, and how often do we actually talk about pleasure? But, you know, the idea is there that, like, it's nice to to feel comfortable. Um, And for me, one of the ways that I feel the most uh, alive is feeling empowered and feeling free. And so when symptoms arise... I find it to be a much better use of my time to have a conversation with my body, to have a conversation, you know, with my spirit, with, you know, with the symptoms and be like, what is happening here? Why are, why are you here? What is the message that you have for me? What is this adapt? What is behind this adaptation? What have I been ignoring? What am I afraid of? What have I been putting off? Um, what, have, what was I neglecting that, has contributed to this and moving forward, how do I move forward in a way that is more empowered, more in line, more open, um, rather than just chasing symptoms all the time. Now I get that this maybe isn't a super popular approach, especially for the mainstream, especially now when people are just used to numbing themselves and, you know, just wanting symptoms to go away. If you listen to that IBD podcast, you know, you heard me talk about that. That's what I wanted for a long, long time. I just wanted the symptoms to go away. I didn't want to be inconvenienced. I wanted to be like all my other peers, you know, that from what I could tell, were feeling a lot happier and healthier than I was. Um, and just that desire for symptoms to go away doesn't really help to to reinstall like or, or to, to re-engage in that connection with our higher consciousness. And if we're looking at, in this course, we look at the chakras and the energy body and, you know, auras and whatnot. And, um, you know, the idea there is that the, the, the chakras, the wheels, these are like energetic receivers in the body. And certain ones are attuned to certain parts of the body. They're attuned to certain, um, I guess you could call it frequencies, but, you know, different, different uh, things that arise kind of have a propensity to certain areas. It's, it's sort of like... I think about it like a radio dial where as you turn the dial, you know, the lower chakras, you're going to get a particular kind of music. You're going to get a particular kind of, you know, talk show or topics there. And then you turn the dial again and the second chakra is going to have a little different language, you know, and onward and upward. And the seventh chakra is going to have different, totally different vibe and energy and whatever. And so as you kind of connect with different parts of the body, you can kind of expect there to be uh, a different feeling, just like as if you were changing channels on the TV or on the radio. I guess we don't really use Do you guys still listen to the radio? Anyone listen to the radio anymore? Or is it all just uh, streaming? Anyway, um, and so, you know, engaging this conversation, it's just such a, for me, it's such a better use of time. Now, it's important to not engage, like, with judgment. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, it's not even saying necessarily that, like, you know, sometimes the adaptation is so necessary that it's not even like if we were to listen to our make the the spiritual adjustments all the time that we would never have a physical change because the part of thriving in this life is the physical body has to be challenged. That that resistance that comes up when we don't feel well is 
precisely the thing that can make us stronger, make us healthier, right? We know the immune system needs to be exposed to germs. We have to, the immune system has to be challenged in order for it to be stronger. So there is some of that that's going to happen in, uh, along uh, the process of just living. But when you are unwell or when these symptoms arise, if you're hard on yourself, if you're angry with yourself, if you are uh, angry with God, if you feel like, you know, you're just being uh, at the whim of the fates or, you know, at the whim of something bigger than us or whatever, uh, and that you have no real say in the matter, then that's not a very empowering place. And the research shows that when people have hope and when they have um you know, so- sovereignty, when they feel like they are in charge of their destiny, they they feel better. There's less stress in the body um, and they're overall healthier. And so even when we're having these symptoms, rather than feeling like there's nothing you can do, have a conversation with yourself, have a conversation with those symptoms. And it can look like all sorts of different things, depending on how weird you want to get and what your imagination is like. Um, you know, you could even imagine yourself. Sometimes I'll imagine myself like going into the body, wherever the thing is, is wherever that ailment is. And just like imagining that pain as like an entity or as like a thing and sitting across from it and having a conversation and be like, why are you here? What do you, what do you have to teach me? Right. How, what can I learn from you? What is this experience offering me? What changes might I need to make that could, uh, you know, quicken the recovery or keep this from coming back again? How might the way I move through the world be different because of this discomfort? And how can I move through the world in a way um, that, you know, is, is more is more free, where my body doesn't feel the need to have to adapt in this way? And sometimes like, you know, certainly for me, when I used to be really sick, you know, sometimes like the, the end result of the struggle and the challenge may not happen for a while. And so how do you engage and live in the meantime in a way that's not like just full of woe and, you know, woe is me and, and terrible suffering. And this is where I believe that having this kind of conversation and allowing being open to the possibility, one, that your body can heal in a moment, that there is spontaneous healing that is entirely possible, and that, two, recruiting your entire level of existence, um, you know, whether you want to think about recruiting all of the different energy levels, getting all of the chakras in, involved, or surrendering yourself to God and to the, you know, the greater consciousness, allowing some of this divine intervention to come in through the crown chakra at the top of the head or pulling up the energy from the earth that you need through your feet. Maybe you're, you know, recruiting the mycelium uh, and, you you know, using some mushrooms to heal some of the medicinal mushrooms, or magic mushrooms, if you want to get super weird. Um, or maybe you're recruiting, you know, the essential oils, which we love and, and the power of plant medicine. And we start, you know, enabling our body to adapt in a better way. Uh, by using what nature has to offer in order for us to to feel good in a sustainable way. And this is different than, you know, sometimes we have to, sometimes we, we do reach for pharmaceuticals. I mean, I had allergies. Uh, when was it? I don't know, it was a few weeks ago. It just felt really terrible. And, uh, you know, I was engaging in, in this conversation. And then I was also like, well, and I also have a Claritin nearby, and I'm going to take that because, like, this is also, you know... <laughs> it's also a tool that's available. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I want to feel good and whatever I had stuff to do. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take the Claritin, but I didn't take the Claritin and like in that process, abandon the, uh, this introspection, because I think that that just sets up the opportunity for these things to keep coming back. So there's always this conversation for me. I mean, there's a part of me that's, that likes to be attuned to like, okay, well, what is the, what's the lesson here? What's the teaching here? What is, what is the experience? Not everything is going to be like distilled down into, you know, like a neat and tidy box, but, uh, there can be a conversation and just like any conversation, sometimes those conversations can get kind of messy, but it's still a conversation worth having. And this is where some of these other modalities, things like acupuncture and the meridians, chakras are tremendous. Um, they have these maps of the body. They have these energetic frameworks that can allow us to dive in uh, in a way where we don't have to just sort of figure it out for ourselves, where over thousands of years, these modalities have noticed a correlation and a connection from, you know, like uh, the outer ankle and the base of the skull or, um, you know, the big toe and a headache on the top of the head. 
or maybe uh, you know a connection between um, like your sore throat and the, your internal judgment, the way you you know think about yourself and others, right? Something like this. There's all of these associations and connections that have been laid out um, by practitioners for th- the last thousands of years before us. And then, of course, you know, we have our own lived experiences um, and we can contribute that to to the conversation. So, you know, you don't want to like I, I've always hesitated, like even publishing anything along these lines, because um, I do believe that one of the biggest issues when it comes to illness, especially like recurring illness and chronic illness is attachment and that we become attached to like that whole experience. You can become attached to being sick. You can become attached to the attention that you get. You can be uh, attached to um, feeling weak and ineffective. You can become attached to like the whole thing. And so sometimes when someone like me comes out and we talk about, well, your body might be communicating something with, it's definitely communicating with you. The question is like, what, what part of that communication are you listening to? So when someone like myself comes in here and we start talking about some of these ideas of like, okay, well, if you have um, knee pain, maybe that's difficulty moving forward. If you have back pain, you know, maybe this is financial worries is that then you can like just sort of get attached to that analysis and then believe that that's what's happening. Um, And it's not that way. This is just a suggestion. It's just a thought. It's something that is like, hey, this is what I've seen in my life. This is what some of the ancient texts have said. This is what some of the books have said. This is what my teachers have said. Um, Use it as a a thought, as a thought experiment. Test it out for yourself. See if it fits. See if it works. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, like, doesn't matter. At least you're engaging in the process and you're using it just like you would in a conversation with a friend, someone who has got like a if you've ever done like an icebreaker, there's a prompt uh, and you just use the prompt and you're like, well, let's just see what happens. Sometimes those prompts might lead to uh, like the, the one thing that you've needed to uncover to, that is like the key to your enlightenment. Or you might just find like that it's totally like dumb and it didn't work. And it's just for whatever reason, it wasn't relevant for you, but it was relevant for other people. So with any of this stuff, like watch out for the desire to become attached you know, and for me, it's like all of these ideas are things that are there. I'm not necessarily attached to any of it, but I'm willing to explore all of it because it's in that exploration that, you know, we can learn, we can grow, we can bring ourselves into balance and we can ultimately become, you know, I believe like kinder, more effective humans who are able to be free, free to choose, free to love, free to engage, free to have this human experience without necessarily being controlled by the attachments, all the things of like what we think we should do or shouldn't do, the things that other people are trying to get us to do, you know, we can become aware of the games that we play so that we can, you know, keep our eyes wide open and be like properly empowered and and behind the volition, you know, like making uh, heartfelt, earnest intentions uh, and actions to hopefully, you know, just be nice to each other <laughs> and hopefully spread more kindness to yourself and to others. Um, the Chinese medicine says that, that where the chi flows, there's no pain and where the, where the, the, where there's pain, there's no free flow. And so, you know, the whole idea from, from a Chinese medicine standpoint is to get things flowing again. And if you've been sick, especially if you've had pain, if you've had those knots in your back and whatever, um, you know what it's like uh, to have, you know, to, it feels like the energy is stuck. And then all of a sudden when it starts flowing, it's like a thing of beauty and the body, you know, just has a way of sorting itself out. It's like a traffic accident. You know, when there's a, when there's an accident that's clogging the highway, everything's backed up behind it. And then when the accident gets cleared, you know, give it enough time and the things start flowing, the cars all start flowing again and traffic has a way of sorting itself out unless there's another accident. And then you got to do that whole process of clearing again. And in that clearing, you know, there's, there's that opportunity for conversations. Um, and I just, you know, my personal belief is that when we're using, uh, something like essential oils to help to unblock and to restore that movement, the energetic connection, the conversation can be so much more enriched than if we're engaging with like a Claritin that came from a lab somewhere that there's something about, you know, the full compounds of the plant medicine, um, that I believe 
they speak to us consciously and unconsciously, you know, and the body can adjust in a good way. Whereas with pharmaceuticals, it's not always, it's not always the case that way. They can save lives. They can keep us, keep people healthy. They can keep people stable. Um, but for me, in my experience, the conversation is just very different. It's sort of like, for me, it would be like the difference of sitting with like an elder versus like sitting and talking, trying to have a good conversation with like a drunk at the bar. <laughs> I don't, I haven't made that comparison before, but, um, you know, it's like one is like sacred and the, you know, you're going to like really want to receive like maybe potentially life changing information from the elder and with the drunk at a bar that can be fun, can be interesting, can be a way to pass the time, but it isn't necessarily, um, you know, the gateway to, uh, to continued evolving or enlightenment. Maybe it is. Maybe I just need to have more conversations with drunks at a bar. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been uh, since I've even been into a bar. Um, so you know, I'm gonna leave this this episode here um, before we get into some of the um, like some of the specific ailments and body parts. But I would just like you to engage in that conversation. I'd love to hear about it. I love getting you know these stories and hearing from you guys. You can hit me up on Instagram at James E. Roar. Uh, or you can email the show pleasure points podcast at gmail and let me know what the conversation is like. If you've engaged in this before, if you're doing it right now, you know, what was the thing that came up for you when, um, it was like, okay, what's the one change that I need to make? What is the change you need to make right now? Like what, if you didn't care what other people thought of you, if you didn't care about, um, how hard it might be or how difficult it might be. If you didn't care about the resistance that might come up when making this change, what is the change that you would do? What would you do? And when you think about that, when you, when that answer comes to mind and you tune into it, how does your body feel? What do you notice when you think about doing the thing? Do you feel, is your breathing easier? Are your shoulders relaxing? Um, is your, you know, are you, do you feel tighter? Do you feel, do you immediately go to like problem solving? Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to be able to do this? But that moment right before you get into like, oh my gosh, how am I actually going to do this? That's what I want you to tune into. How does your body feel? Does your stomach, does the tension release a little bit? Does your back feel a little bit better? Does your posture improve? Do you feel like things are possible again? And that's the moment to capitalize on. That's where the healing comes. That's where the free flow of energy is. That's where things really start to transform. And so, you know, hit me up. Let me know. Let me know how that's going. Um, there's still time to get into the to join us in the course if if you're interested in that. If this what we're talking about is fascinating to you and you want to dive into the course that's available, just uh, hit me up. Either of those places, uh, Instagram at James E. Roar or uh, Pleasure Points Podcast at Gmail, and we'll get you uh, we'll get you sorted out and into the course. And um, in upcoming episodes, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, specific ailments and what the maps on the, on the body might mean. Um, so if there's something you'd like me to cover there too, uh, hit me up, send me uh, send me what that is, and uh, we'll address it in a future show. So in the meantime, listen to your bodies, give yourself that space and that time to tune in. Um, and instead of fighting with your symptoms, instead of fighting with the adaptation that your body's going through, instead ask yourself, what is this teaching me? What can I learn from you? How can I grow from this? And I can't wait to hear from you guys. Have a great and blessed week and we'll catch you next time.